Okay. All right. Thank you, Tiff. Um, welcome, everyone. Good to see you. I'm just juggling two volumes here. Let me see. I don't want to blow your speakers up there. Let me just see something here. I think I'm going to mute myself. The only thing is I want to play something for you that has sound. So if you don't hear it, let me know. Hold on one sec. Okay. Can you okay. Uh, sorry. Come on. I can't do that. Okay. I'll just uh, do it this way. There's George. You can hear me. You can hear me, right? Yes, we yeah. can hear you now, right. but the other friend Zoomer. was echoey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go ahead to Zoom or more. And I, I have to do it this way because I want to play a video and I got to share my sound. So anyway, good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Good morning. Morning, Fred. Hey, we, we have Sonny back. I mean, let me tell you something. That was definitely by by real popular demand. And she showed up at the Brent Gove event on uh, Saturday night, uh, lit the room up. And, um, you know, I, I got I got to tell you, this is it's really amazing how things come together. All of you have been around, you know, for I don't know, George, how long have I been doing this now? This soulful Wednesdays actually started out as a spiritual side of success and then went to soulful Wednesdays. How long has it been? Two and a half years, I think. I think, I think three, Fred. I mean, this has been yeah. really just a, a, an ongoing. Yeah. It's just a, the way it's progressed and progressed and progressed. And, um, and, and some of the other guests we've had, but, you know, meeting Sonny, it, it was kind of like, cause I'm kind you know, it's like, you know, how, how, what, there's a missing piece somewhere. And I, I couldn't figure it out, right? Because, you know, from, you know, the slides that I do and this whole idea of the ego and the soul and, and who's winning and all that kind of stuff. But what Sonny did last week was incredible, right? Uh, for those that you were on, on Saturday, there was, there's a lot of stuff going on in, in a number of business issues, this and that, and, you know, a whole lot of things at one time in, in my life right now. And so when Sonny and I, when she did the meeting that morning and we went into the brain amping, Saturday morning, I woke up with this, and I, I do a, a, a ritual, like, you know, rub my hands real fast together and hold it over my eyes every morning to, to, to kind of, that's how I wake up and, and go into a meditation. But that morning was different. And, and what came to my, and I'm going to share this with you. Um, let me hit share screen and make sure I share my sound. What what that morning I woke up. Um, what was really interesting? How come? Oh, there it is. Cool. Um, and I'm going to call this series the Battle of the Bees. Okay. And you know I've been talking about we all are nothing more than our BS, right? Our belief systems from mother, fathers, teachers, and preachers, right? That's what we are. Nothing but a whole accumulation of our of our belief systems. You know. Uh, you know, we we keep hearing over and over and over again from Dr. Bruce Lipton. Every single one of us are nothing more than seven years repeated over and over and over again. The real courses that I introduced that Evelyn uh, Hernandez uh, participated in the first one out of our group, the, the, the first one, and that's coming up again in September. But the same thing, belief systems, mother, fathers, teachers, and preachers. So that the battle of the bees and what is it? So. Saturday morning, I woke up, I, I do that, and, and that brain amping was very powerful for me. And all of a sudden, it says, stop, you got to be brightly, you got to see things brightly, you got to see things beautifully, and you got to see things bountifully. And those three words came to me. And then I went, oh, my gosh, and I just kept repeating them and repeating them. I said, because I was questioning a lot of the things I'm doing in, in, in building for some people and so on and so forth. But it, it, you you're you're bright you're you're you definitely are all about beauty and you are about bounty for everyone involved so and i i just i mean literally it was an experience <laughs> so i shared it with sunny on saturday so she sends me this this um this music that's the same words except it has blissful to it right rightfully beautiful and blissful and i'll share that another time because i don't want to take too much time but then this today, yesterday, um, someone got called me that hasn't talked to me uh, and has gone silent on me in four months. And someone that was very, very, very near and dear, I spent 40 years of my life with, because she was programmed that she shouldn't talk to me. And out of the blue, she calls me yesterday. 
Well, actually, she texts me and then she calls me. Can I call you or something of that nature? So then I look at this video I had sent her some time ago, back six months ago when we were trying to make this thing work for the second round for two years. And, and it, so guys, pay attention today. This brain amping is very serious. And because what it does, it, it, it's going to take you all these years, the, the two and a half, three years that we've been talking about this, where you know we came off the assembly line this way, but we got programmed this way. And what that created for us was this ego because our hearts were eaten away at, we don't have the courage uh, in our lives that we need. And so this kind of rules, right? And it's all about do, 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 do. It's all about living like that thermometer that we've been talking about for two and a half, three years. Well, I think one of the missing pieces, I, I gave you a lot of the theory, I gave you a lot of the um, how-tos and all that, but, but the kind of, really get you to go silent and shut everything down 100% over here is what Sonny is doing with this brain amping. And watch out, I, I could see us, uh, we're gonna be a powerful duo, I promise you. <laughs> but I call this crossing the Jordan, right? The Jordan River in a biblical sense. And you know, the Jordan River represented a crossing over from a land of slavery to the promised land, right? This is where the promised land is. And this is all over here, slavery is all about do, 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 do. Well, the, the promised land is all about being, 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 being. And that's what that, this brain amp is you're gonna hear about today. But I'm gonna play this nine minute video, get your pencils out, your pens, whatever you got, because this was just on top of this bright, brightly, beautifully, bountifully, blissfully. And I used to use this a lot. We've never played it here, but I wanna play this for you. Take these notes down, because this is gonna go into all this stuff that's in our heads, you know, the, the, the stuff that just, just trash, right? This head trash uh, from parents and teachers and preachers and, uh, you know, all this the programming. So um, I wanna play this and then I'm gonna turn it over to Sonny to kind of get us out of that left side, that ego brain into the, into the soul side. So go ahead and get your, I'm telling you, you're gonna to wanna to take good notes here. Here we go, let me play this for you. Bingo. Tell me if you can hear the sound right away. Give me a thumbs up. Yeah. We've all got two wolves in us. A good one and a bad one. And they both want to eat. The best I can tell, we just got to feed that good one a little more than the other one. Happiness is an emotional response to an outcome. If I win, I will be happy. If I don't, I won't. It's an if-then, cause and effect, quid pro quo, standard that we cannot sustain because we immediately raise it every time we attain it. You see, happiness, happiness demands a certain outcome. It is result reliant. And I say, if happiness is what you're after, then you're gonna be let down frequently and you're gonna be unhappy much of your time. Joy, though, joy is a different thing. It's something else. Joy is not a choice. It's not a response to some result. It's a constant. Joy is the feeling that we have from doing what we are fashioned to do, no matter the outcome. Now, personally, as an actor, I started enjoying He's my work living, and man. literally being more happy when I stopped trying to make the daily labor a means to a certain end. For example, uh, I need this film to be a box office success. You know, I need my performance to be acknowledged. I, I need the respect of my peers. And all of those are reasonable aspirations, but the truth is, as soon as the work, the daily making of the movie, the doing of the deed became the reward in itself for me, I got more box office, more accolades and respect than I ever had before. See, joy is always in process. It's under construction. It is in constant approach, alive and well in the doing of what we're fashioned to do and enjoying it. And the easiest way to dissect success is through gratitude. Giving thanks for that which we do have, for what is working, appreciating the simple things we sometimes take for granted. We give thanks for these things and that gratitude reciprocates, creating more to be thankful for. It's really simple and it works. 
Now, I'm not saying be in denial of your failures. No, we can learn from them too, but only if we look at them constructively as a means to reveal what we are good at, what we can get better at, what we do succeed at. Our right, life's a verb. We try our best, we don't always do our best. And since we are the architects of our own lives, let's study the habits, the practices, the routines that we have that lead to and feed our success, our joy, our honest pain, our laughter, our earned tears. Let's dissect that and give thanks for those things. And when we do that, guess what happens? We get better at them and we have more to dissect. It's a get rich quick on the internet, richest 15 minutes of fame world that we live in and we see it every day. But we all want to succeed, right? So the question that we got to ask ourselves is what success is to us? What success is to you? Is it more money? That's fine. I got nothing against money. Maybe it's a healthy family. Maybe it's a happy marriage. Maybe it's to help others, to be famous, to be spiritually sound, to leave the world a little bit better place than you found it. Continue to ask yourself that question. Now your answer may change over time and that's fine. But do yourself this favor. Whatever your answer is, don't choose anything that will jeopardize your soul. Prioritize who you are, who you want to be, and don't spend time with anything that antagonizes your character. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, man. It tastes sweet, but you will get cavities tomorrow. All right, life is not a popularity contest. Be brave, take the hill, but first answer that question, what's my hill? Well, for me, it's a measurement of, uh, of five things. We got fatherhood, we got being a good husband, we got my health, mind, body, and spirit, we got career, and we got friendships. These are what's important to me in my life right now. Because I wanna keep all five in healthy shape. And I know that if I don't take care of them, if I don't keep up maintenance on them, one of them is gonna get weak, man. It's gonna to dip too deep into the debit section. It's gonna go bankrupt. It's gonna get sick, die. So first, we have to define success for ourselves. And then we have to put in the work to maintain it. Take that daily tally, tend our garden, keep the things that are important to us in good shape. Defining ourselves by what we are not is the first step that leads us to really knowing who we are. You know that group of friends that you hang out with that they, they really might not bring out the best in you? You know, they, they gossip too much or they're kind of shady. They really aren't gonna be there for you in a pinch. Or how about that bar that we keep going to that we always seem to have the worst hangover from? Or that computer screen, right? That computer screen that keeps giving us an excuse not to get out of the house and engage with the world and get some real human interaction. Or how about that food that we keep eating, that stuff that tastes so good going down, it makes us feel like crap the next week, when we feel lethargic and we keep putting on weight? Well, those people, those places, those things, stop giving them your time and energy. Just don't go there, I mean, put them down. And when you do this, when you do put them down, when you quit going there, and you quit giving them your time, you inadvertently find yourself spending more time and in more places that are healthy for you, that bring you more joy. Why? Because you just eliminated the who's, the where's, the what's, and the when's that were keeping you from your identity. Look, trust me, too many options, <laughs> I promise you, this, too many options will make a tyrant of us all. All right, so get rid of the excess, the wasted time. Decrease your options. And if you do this, you will have accidentally, almost innocently, put in front of you what is important to you by process of elimination. Knowing who we are is hard. It's hard. So give yourself a break. Eliminate who you are not first, and you're going to find yourself where you need to be. Make voluntary obligations. I'm talking about the ones that we make with ourselves, with our God, with our own consciousness. I'm talking about the you versus you obligations. We have to have them. Now again, these are not societal laws and expectations that we acknowledge and endow for anyone other than ourselves. 
These are faith-based obligations that we make on our own. These are not the lowered insurance rates for a good driving record. You will not be fined or put in jail if you do not gratify these obligations I speak of. No one else governs these but you. They are your secrets with yourself, your own private counsel, personal protocols. And while nobody throws you a party when you abide by them, no one's going to arrest you when you break them either, except yourself. An honest man's pillow is his peace of mind. And when you lay down on that pillow at night, no matter who's in your bed, we all sleep alone. These are your personal Jiminy Crickets, and there are not enough cops in the entire world to police them. It's on you. It's on you. We do our best when our destinations are beyond the measurement, when our reach continually exceeds our grasp, and when we have immortal finish lines. And when we do this, the race is never over. The journey has no port. The adventure never ends because we are always on the way. So do this, do this and let them, let somebody else come up and tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, you, you, you scored. Let them run up and tap you on the shoulder and say, man, you, you won. Let them come tell you, you can go home now. Let them say, I love you too. Let them say, thank you. Take the lid off the man-made roofs that we put above ourselves and always play like an underdog. What'd you think? Awesome. 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 Oh, let me just stop. Love yourself. That was unbelievable. You know, one of the... <laughs> one, Loved one. it. Very powerful. Yeah. Um... You know, I this is in my uh, prison ministry. Yeah. Who who you are is hard. Who knowing who you are is hard. Uh that that's an incredible statement. That's the one that I've been going with now, what a year and a half with Socrates. The unexamined life is not worth living. Um, and then so so this next level with us, and, and I think we're gonna probably have Sonny every Wednesday, at least for 15 minutes. Today we're gonna take a half hour with us to really talk about this brain amping, but to go back here one more time is the, the no, and by the way, this, this QR code is that SMOS plan again. Uh, by the way, we forgot we had the registration. If you're doing the SMOS plan, please put in there, you're committed doing the SMOS plan so I know who you are, so you have access to my calendar, okay? Um, and I didn't realize I didn't have it a shared doc, I do now. And Joe, if you would, is make sure this video from this presentation goes in that folder. That would be great. But here's what Sonny is going to help us do, okay, with this brain amping. And it, it was so powerful last week. And I and I do meditation. But with her brain amping, it was so powerful to really, to get us to realize, because see, this is who we are. You don't go out and achieve these. Let me keep reminding you and reminding you and reminding you. We're, this is not something you achieve. This is who you already are. This is who we already are. You know, one of my favorite you know, persons I talk about is Robin Williams, how he never was able to get over to here. He always had to live here, right? So what, what meditation does is get you to quiet this chatter, this, this lie, this, this, this belief system, because that's all lie and it's all fear over here. This is all truth and this is all love. <clears throat> that's what meditation does. But what Sonny's brain amping is just it's the first time i've ever experienced what we experienced last week so sonny i want you to take it from here uh take us for the 25 30 minutes to back to where we took us last week i can't wait till my next wake up the next couple days so i'm so glad you're here i'm gonna stop share we're gonna turn it over to sonny are you all ready get get ready pull over if you're in the car like someone did last week it's all yours girl take it away Oh, thank you. Thank you. That video is great. That was like the best I ever saw that actor. He's awesome. Anyways, so if you are walking, how about if you're walking, can you turn off your video? Because last week that was distracting. So if you're walking, turn off your video and we'll know you're still with us. Uh, of course, you're going to get the best benefits out of this if you sit still. And if you want to lay down and you're uncomfortable, you can do that. But if you feel good and your spine feels good, you can sit straight up in a chair, put your feet flat on the floor, and then we'll get started. 
So who's ready to activate more joy? We just heard about you know Matthew McConaughey talking about joy, right? Just raise your hand if you want more joy. Because I always teach in my, my business is called Feel Great Meditate. And one of my trademark tools that you're gonna learn today is brain amping. But what I always teach is that these tools activate joy and joy is the secret sauce. Joy is the secret sauce. It's like the Big Mac, the secret sauce, but it's way better and healthier, right? And it is, it is invisible, right? You can only feel it. You can't see it, you can't touch it. And it's just like belief and love. These are the three invisible secret ingredients to manifesting. And when you do meditation, meditation is the key to your success. Meditation is the key to your manifestation and breathing is the key to your meditation. So today we're going to do some breathing. I'm going to teach you some different things as last week. I'm going to share some things that we also did last week because repetition is the mother load, right? So if you're ready for more joy, I'm so excited for you. And um, I just wanted to tell you that if you've had any brain fog, any of that you know, cloud in your head that all of these techniques I'm sharing with you today will remove that brain fog. All of these techniques help activate joy. All of the breathing is gonna flood your brain with oxygen. And when we flood your brain with oxygen, we're gonna slow down the brain waves. When we slow down the brain waves, that's where the magic happens. So right now, most of you are sitting in what we call the beta level, right? You get up, you might check your email. Now you're getting into the stream of life. But if you get up and you do these techniques, you can immediately wake up in the alpha level naturally, which is like hypnosis, everything we put in happens. But if you start your day off with these techniques and you start to do some breathing right off the bat, you'll maintain the alpha level. And if you do these techniques with me for the next 20 minutes, we can sometimes push to the theta level, which means the brain waves are slowing down even more. This is where extreme miracles happen and healing and manifesting improved health and wellness happen. So if anyone out there has any health issues, we're going to think those away. Consciousness is the key here. So wherever you are, let's get started. Let's go ahead and we're going to close our eyes for a lot of it. So don't be worried that, um, you know, who's watching you. Everyone has their eyes closed except for me. Oh, and also I was going to say, everybody just mute your, mute yourself in case you're breathing really loud or you want to let out some more sound or when we say our intentions or affirmations, you could just yell them out from your heart and nobody's going to hear you except for the people in your own room, right? So the flow state awaits you. Let's go ahead and start with rubbing our hands. I do this every day. You might've done it when you went up to bat, right? Before you went up to bat playing baseball and you're like, yeah, I'm going to hit that ball, right? And, and hopefully you're going to bat thinking like, yeah, I'm going to get on base. I'm going to score a point, right? And if you were thinking that you um, weren't, then you probably didn't, right? Well, the same is true with life. We're going to think of only what we want. And the best way to create the future is to predict it in our mind. So I want you to rub real fast, real fast, real fast. And then I want you to take your hands right over the brain. Maybe you feel a little tingling sensation in the fingers and the palms. And almost like you're giving yourself a washing of your hair. But this is really you, you know, clearing and cleansing your auric field. So it's like, oh, you know what? I shouldn't have watched that news. Ah, oh, get that out of there. Oh, I shouldn't have listened to that person. It's negative, right? Rub your hands together again. So when we do this, this balances our right and left brain. This is why we're doing this. Yes, you are going to be balancing the right and left brain. Go ahead and close the eyes and then take the hands just about an inch away from the head. Again, feel your energy in the hands. This is like you just sloughing off any of that energy, any lower frequency and energy that we pick up from the news, from negative people, right? Good. And then I want you to come to Gyan Mudra, which I taught you last week. These are yoga postures of the hands. So when you take your pointer finger to thumb and you add a little pressure, it's like closing a circuit in your brain. If you ever study acupressure, acupuncture, and then just relax the hands in your lap, the palms face up, and then add a little pressure to the right thumb, right pointer finger. And I want you to think to yourself as you do this in both hands, three times inside of your mind, this is all I have to do to feel calm. Say that in your mind three times. This 
is all I have to do to feel calm. And see how fast you're saying it in your mind. And we always state our intentions three times. Now I want you to say it because you're all muted out loud, calm and nice with conviction. Like you believe it. This is all I have to do to feel calm and be excited. Like, yeah, like this, this, this is all I have to do to feel calm. And just notice how calm you feel just from already telling yourself that this is the way you're going to feel. You are in control of your thoughts. What you put in is happening. Now we're going to start with some breathing. But last week, remember, I taught you about the gaze. And so we kept talking about closing the physical eyes, but then our internal gaze rolls up right into that center brow spot into that what is known as the seat of intuition, your third eye chakra. And as we roll the eyes up, we start to stretch those optic nerves. And just think how healthy that is, right? So just the outside eyes are closed, but the internal gaze is staring up and just see if you can get that. And I'm gonna tell you when to stare in that point. And now I wanna teach you another gaze. And that gaze is, looking down at your nose. And so the best way to do it is to stick your finger out in front of you about six inches and then open your eyes and then look at that finger and then just watch it coming towards you to the tip of the nose. And your eyes might even cross a little bit. And then once you're staring right at the tip of the nose, the eyes start to close about nine tenths of the way and then drop your finger. So it feels like you're crossing your eyes. Again, you're stretching your optic nerves. And all of these take some work. So what happens here is we're literally, when we start to stare down at the nose, we're opening up this whole area, what is known as our pineal gland that sits right back in there behind the center brow spot. This is where we're releasing melatonin. This is how we relax. So just from this simple technique, you can find relaxation. And then we're going to come back to that in a minute. Now I want you to take your gaze back up to that center brow spot. And then we're holding the fingers in Gyan Mudra. And then I want you to take a deep inhale through the nose. And then as you exhale, open the mouth and just let it go like a big and just breathe it all out. And I want you to really focus on the exhale, like you're squeezing the lungs, you're emptying, and then we're squeezing the abs. And then inhale through the nose. And then I want you to pause, relax the shoulders, and then open the mouth real big and say, ah. And you'll notice that you could probably exhale double the length of time as the inhale. So let's count in our mind to three about this fast. One, two, three. So we'll inhale for three. And then pause, relax the shoulders. I want you to hold and suspend the lungs for three. And then open the mouth, exhale for six. Good, inhale for three. Hold for three. Exhale, six. Inhale for three. Hold for three. Exhale, six. Notice that you're not pulling the shoulders up. Inhale for three. Hold for three, relax the shoulders. Exhale, six. Now we're flooding the brain with oxygen. We're flooding the lungs with oxygen. So notice you can actually hold it a little bit more. So I want you to inhale for three. We're gonna hold for six and then exhale for six. But if anyone has high blood pressure, you get to stick to holding it for three. So let's go ahead. Eyes are closed. We're gazing up to that center brow spot. Inhale for three. 
hold for six. And exhale six. Inhale for three. Hold for six. Exhale six. One more time, just like that. Inhale for three. Hold for six. Exhale six. Just keep your eyes closed. Just see how you feel after some good deep breaths. Exhaling what no longer serves us. Feeling calm, feeling focused. It's like every time you close your eyes, you go right to that drishti, that point of focus for the gaze right between the center brows. It's like how focused can you be? that nothing distracts you, that you take this next 15 minutes for you because this is going to catapult your success for the day. This is going to create success for the entire week, if not month or year, because when we slow down the brain waves from all of the breathing and get to the alpha and beta level, everything that we think of is a seed planted in that subconscious mind. So let's go ahead and set your intention today. Maybe it's just I am peaceful because with peace, all else comes. Maybe it's I am healing my body. I am healing my life. Maybe it's I'm attracting my true soul partner. Maybe it's I'm closing that house. I'm meeting a new buyer. I'm getting a new listing. I am increasing my sales. So whatever your intention is, Pick one that's really awesome that you're going to remember for the rest of today's practice. Meditation is a practice, just like yoga. It's different every day. That's why we practice it. So I want you to think of that intention. Everyone have it. Just nod your head yes if you have an intention. Good. And then I want you to say it in your mind three times, just like you said, very slowly. This is all I have to do to feel calm. three times, planting that seed in your subconscious. And that was inside your head, right? Now I want you to say it three times out loud. That way you're speaking it into existence. And so when we set our intention, we're not just throwing out words. We are very, you know, pinpoint about exactly what we want. And as we think it, we start to visualize it. That means we can see it while we feel it in the heart. That's that secret sauce again, that joy. We need the joy of the heart to align with the mind. When we emotionalize our thoughts, that's when they manifest on the physical plane. So as you say it, say it with conviction, like, yes, I'm selling that house. Yes, I'm finding a buyer for that new listing, right? And be excited about it or whatever your goal is. Feel it, see it. And what we're seeing is we're seeing the end result. So you can already see the, the sold sign hanging there next to that house. You can see the house. You can see that the new buyer is excited. You can see the sellers excited. So we feel that, right? So to clear the mind a little bit more, to get a little more elevated, I wanted to teach you another breathing technique. This one's gonna be in through the nose, out through the nose. It's three quick inhales through the nose and three quick exhales out the nose. So it sounds like this. So you get into a little rhythm. Okay, come back to Gaia Mudra, feel those pointer fingers to thumb, think about closing a circuit in your brain, and then we'll begin. Only in and out the nose.
one more. And then just sit with your eyes closed, see how that feels and your healthy heart, your healthy lungs. Notice how the brain feels. So we're gonna connect ourselves to our root chakra. Our root chakra has to be open. That's located in the base of your spine by your privates. And it rises right there. We have this dormant energy that's called Kundalini. And unless we're stimulating it and awaking it and we're conscious about it, it may not happen. It may be dormant forever. But this energy, we want to open and expand that root chakra so that energy can rise. And so one way that we stimulate the frontal lobe of the brain and that chakra point at the exact same time is to do this next exercise. So remember how I told you I wanted you to take your finger and then push it to the nose and we're staring down at that nose. The, the eye gaze is at the nose, that's our drishti. We're gonna take our hands out to the side, arms out to the side, the palms face out, if you can see, but your arms are straight out, the palms face the heavens. And we're gonna be staring down at the nose and then last week I taught that breathing technique, breath of fire. And breath of fire is when we breathe in and out the nose only, we keep the mouth closed and we're gonna pump the navel in on the exhale. So we're hitting the spine with a hammer. That's how hard we're pulling in the navel, okay? So we're gonna focus down at the nose, arms are out to the side and we'll take an inhale and then begin to pump the belly. Go, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And every time you're pulling that navel in, you want to do it harder, harder, harder. We're waking up that first chakra, the second chakra. And we got to get that energy rising up the spine so we can get it all the way up to the brain. Good. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep staring down at the nose. Good, keep the gaze where it is, take a deep inhale, and then close the eyes, relax the arms down into the lap, go ahead and exhale, keep the eyes closed, inhale deeply, exhale out the mouth powerfully, inhale through the nose again, and then I want everybody to just pause, hold the breath, suspend the lungs, if you exhale, inhale again, and then hold it, suspend the lungs, relax the shoulders. And now I want you to switch your gaze to the center brow. Stretch those optic nerves. And then exhale, let it go. Good, inhale deeply. Hold the breath, suspend the lungs, relax the shoulders, roll the eyes up as if you could see up into that center brow. Exhale, let it go. Just keep your eyes closed. Take a moment to just tune in. See how quiet the mind is getting already, how clear the head is getting. Just from that eye gaze, staring down at the nose, we can activate that pineal gland. Now it's super important to focus on that pineal gland as well as your pituitary gland. This is your endocrine system. This is your hormones and your glands. This is what's like regulating your mood. So if you do this every day, I guarantee you're gonna be happier, you're gonna be more excited and you're gonna feel the feeling of joy. So that exercise with our arms out to the side balances the left and right brain hemispheres. And of course, it's gonna make it easier for you to focus. The other good thing about this is that it's regulating your circadian rhythm. And as we focus on our pineal gland, we are gonna release more of that melatonin. We're gonna release more of those feel good chemicals. So before we start the actual brain amping technique, like I said, this is all like a, 
a pre-workout. This is pre-game before we get to that silence and reach that meditative zone, right? So we're going to do another round of Breath of Fire. If you weren't here last week or you're not sure, we're just going to sit up with a nice straight spine. You can come back to Gyan Mudra, point your finger to thumb. We're going to start off focusing in that third eye. We're going to breathe in and out the nose only. Mouth stays closed. And then you're going to be pumping the navel in, hit it hard like a hammer. This is going to awaken that seat of creation. This is the second chakra. This balances our sexual organs. It's going to also open up that solar plexus area. And that's our seat of will, our willpower, our self-power, our confidence. So just from doing these techniques, you're going to feel more confidence. And we're going to awaken that second and third area. So we'll come back to Gaya Mudra. Let's sit up with a nice straight spine. Focus in the third eye. We'll take a deep inhale to begin. And begin. Good. Breathe in and out the nose only. Pump the navel. Pump the navel. Pump the navel. Good. Keep pulling it in. Good, take a deep inhale. Exhale out the mouth powerfully. Inhale deeply. Exhale powerfully. And one more deep inhale and you're gonna hold it. Hold it, suspend the lungs, relax the shoulders, eyes are closed. Exhale, let it go. All the way out. And just sit there with the just sit there for a few seconds with your eyes closed, seeing how all the oxygen just flooded the brain. See how it feels behind the navel, waking up new cells. So we're gonna do that again, and then we're gonna add the brain amping like we did last week, and that's when we're gonna inhale afterwards, hold the breath, and we're gonna squeeze those areas of our body that we talked about last week. I'll guide you through the whole thing. So we're gonna focus in the third eye to begin. And then as we reach the end of brain amping, I'm gonna have you switch your gaze and gaze all the way up. You can practice it right now. You can take your gaze from that center brow and start to stare all the way up to the top of the brain as if you can let in more light energy. You'll notice you might see a little light, some shadow. And when you're doing it right, you'll notice you feel rapid eye movement. You'll feel some blinking and the eyes move real fast. So that's when you know you're there. This is going to create new neuro pathways to the brain. This is going to stretch the optic nerves. This is literally going to amplify your brain. So all the thoughts you're having better be positive because it's going to amp up all those thoughts. All right. So to begin, we'll start back in the third eye. Focus back there, right between the eyebrows. We'll start with a deep inhale and begin. Good, in and out the nose, in and out the nose, pump the navel, pump the navel. This is also like building a fire right there in your stomach and it's just burning up any emotional clutter that you don't need. It's just going to let you let go of what no longer serves you emotionally. So keep burning it up, burning it up. Take a deep inhale and hold it. Relax the shoulders. Roll the eyes up. Exhale, let it go. Let the eye gaze come back to the third eye. Take another deep inhale. Hold the breath, relax the shoulders, roll the eye gaze up like you could see out the top of the brain, sensing, seeing, feeling that white light above the brain. Maybe see it up to the right, to the left, and then exhale, let it go. 
Good. Now we're going to add on the other parts. We're going to inhale deeply. Hold it, relax the shoulders. Then we're going to squeeze the rectum anus. I know it's an odd request, but we squeeze the mula band. That's the area right at the base of the spine, rectum anus. And we squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then exhale, let it go. And that's going to help open up that root chakra that needs to be open to manifest. Take another deep inhale and hold it. And then we're going to squeeze the rectum and anus. It's an odd request, I know, but it works. Exhale, let it go. We'll have better elimination of both physical stuff and emotional. And then we're going to add on the navel now. Inhale deeply. Hold it. Relax the shoulders. Stare on up. Gaze up. Roll the eyes up. And now let's squeeze. Mulaban, squeeze the rectum anus. Pull the navel back to the spine like you're making yourself real skinny, real skinny, real skinny. Exhale, let it go. Eyes are still closed. Inhale deeply. Hold it. Roll the eye gaze up. Relax the shoulders. Squeeze Mulaban, rectum anus. Pull up. Pull the navel in. And now I want you to sip in a little more oxygen through the nose and tuck the diaphragm up under the heart. Massage the heart. Exhale. Let it go. This is like an internal car wash for your organs. Inhale. This time we'll take it to the heart. Big inhale. Hold it at the top, relax the shoulders, squeeze the roots, pull the navel back to the spine, sip in a little more oxygen, tuck the diaphragm, bring the energy up to the heart. Exhale, let it go. You may feel a little winded. That's how you know it's working. Now we're gonna take it all the way up to the throat like last week. Inhale deeply. Relax the shoulders, hold it, suspend the breath. And then we're going to squeeze the root, pull the navel in, sip in a little more oxygen, tuck the diaphragm, bring the energy all the way up to the throat. And then I want everybody to say, ah, ah, yeah, open that throat where we speak into existence. Good. Now we're going to bring it all the way up to the third eye. Take another deep breath. Hold it, relax the shoulders, squeeze the bottom, pull the navel in, sip in a little more oxygen, bring the energy up to the heart, up to the throat, up to that third eye, roll the eyes up. Exhale, let it go. Woo. And then we're gonna take it all the way to the crown. Make this the best one yet, inhale deeply. Hold it at the top, relax the shoulders, roll the eyes up. Let's squeeze the root, pull the navel in, sip in a little more oxygen, and bring the energy up, 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 up to the third eye, up to the crown, roll the eyes up, stretch those optic nerves up, sensing, seeing, feeling that white light, and then exhale, let it go. And just take a few easy breaths, see how the brain feels. Slow down your heart rate. Relax the eyes, relax the eyelids, relax all eye muscles, relax all facial muscles, relaxing the neck, relaxing the throat. And just feel that wave of relaxation moving down into the shoulders, relaxing the shoulders. Relaxing the arms, relaxing the spine. And then I want you to roll the eyes up again, sensing, seeing this big, br brilliant white light, like a beam of white light shining from the heavens right down to your crown. And you welcome this energy. It's like, it's like a waterfall and it's just rinsing over your peaceful brain, your brain in harmony. It just rinses right over your peaceful mind, down your throat, into that open, expanded heart center. And I want you to just think about three people or things you're grateful for and just hold that in your heart and your mind and be like, yeah, I'm so grateful for that grandchild. So grateful for my dog, for that buyer, whatever it is. 
And then just see it like this beautiful opening of the heart center, more light. And it just goes all the way down into the legs, the knees, toes, and feet. And just notice how relaxed you are, focused, aware, feeling that joy in the heart. And I want you to focus on that intention one more time. Now that the mind is peaceful, the heart is peaceful, and we align the heart and mind into coherence. And when we bring that into coherence, we enter the manifestation zone, which means everything you think of is happening. See it, say it, think it. Feel it. Feel it. I would say feel to make it real. See the end result. Like if you wanted to meet someone or get married again, you would see yourself already walking down the aisle. You'd see the dress. You'd see yourself at the altar. And most important, when we're manifesting and we decide what we want and we add that secret sauce, we must ask for it. So go ahead and ask, what? What do I do next? What do I do next to achieve this, to be this, to live this? And then bring your hands to prayer mudra, to the heart center, and take a moment to give thanks in advance because everything you think of is happening. Everything you ask for, you deserve and are worthy of receiving. So give thanks for the answers of what to do next that are coming to you with the answers. And then I want you to just roll the eyes up one more time. And just gaze all the way up, sensing, seeing that white light. I want you to see it like nine feet higher than your crown. I want you to see it like an antenna, like a cell tower that's from the third eye all the way up to the brain, nine feet higher, activating that law of attraction, activating your magnetism, allowing things to come to you easily and effortlessly. And then I want you to see that like a big white light, nine feet higher, and then goes nine feet behind you and nine feet below the feet into the ground, feeling grounded, 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 and nine feet in front of you. And this is your white light bubble that you just want to activate every day to bring you back to the space that you're in right now. And you could do that by saying white light, white light, activate white light three times. And you just see that nine feet above, below, behind, and in front of you, and put yourself in that white light bubble. And that way, when you walk through the room and the news is on, it bounces off of you. And the lower frequencies and vibrations of the world bounce off of you. And that way you stay in your little white light bubble, thinking your good, healthy, wealthy thoughts. So I thank you for participating. I hope you feel more focused and relaxed and ready for a great day. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and unmute your cameras, unmute your mics. Oh. How's everyone feel now? Fantastic. I can't see who was talking. Me, I feel great. Karen? Yes. Karen feels great. Oh, good. I saw you participating. You look like you're really getting it. I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Were you here last week? I missed, I missed you last week, but I managed to catch up. Okay. Awesome. 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 I feel ready. I can't see who's saying that. <laughs> Alita. And what did you say? I'm sorry. I said, I feel ready. Thank you, Sunny. Yeah. Ready, yes, ready to conquer the world, right? That's it. Yay. And Michelle, how did you feel? I feel so relaxed and ready and like I can just go out there and meet people and make relationships and yeah, it feels good. Nice. Light. Yeah, thank you. You bet, you bet. So you guys got some new tools. Deep, how did you like today? You learned some new tools 
Did anyone ever practice that nose gaze before? No. I, I did. I do meditation twice a day already. Uh, yes. At the PM, uh, 20 minutes. But the breathing technique is really, I, I really enjoy this a lot. I, I just realized that <laughs> this is my second <laughs> time doing this with you. I did that one last week and this week. So uh, I think it pumps my, uh, it gets me on a different level. So I need really need to look into it more. And maybe I need to add this to my you know, mix of things that I'm already doing. Yeah, I Thank mean, you. you know, you're welcome. TM is amazing. And, you know, TM is just so everyone knows when you keep your mantra and you keep repeating the same thing over and over again. So you literally start to go into this trance and you transcend the mind and keeping that mantra inside of your head. And some, some meditators even have a mantra that they'll repeat literally in the back of their mind all day long, even if they're singing or closing a deal, they still got the mantra going, which is very high level. They, they meditate every morning, three hours a day in silence, and then keep it going all day. Now that's very advanced, but I also teach Kundalini, which is um, amazing. Also yoga and meditation. And so it's a lot of sound. And it's a lot of mantras. It's a lot of mudras. It's a lot of yoga postures and movie meditations and kriyas. And so whenever we do mantras in Kundalini, we always say them out loud. And so when we say them out loud, then next thing you know, you start to sing it. And if you sing your affirmations, then we start to feel it, right? And if we feel it in the heart, now we got the heart activated and feel the joy. Now we're hearing it, we're thinking it, and we're saying it singing it we're feeling it it's like a home run right it's like direct call to god hello yes can you help me find a new buyer today right <laughs> uh, how can i calm down this buyer right and we just ask for what we want what do i say to this person how do i fix the situation how do i calm my child down how do i help my child right it works with everything whether you want to attract love improve relationships increase money close a deal get your car manifest something whatever it is but I like to, I love TM and it's, it's really good when you're like on a, on a bus or a train or, a, you know, plane or somewhere where there's people around, but I come from the background where I like to say it out loud. So even like that song um, that I sent Fred about bountiful, beautiful, blissful, I am, I am, you, you just keep listening to that. And then the next thing you know, you start singing it. Now you're singing it and you're singing these beautiful words you are what you think of. Oh, I'm bountiful. I'm beautiful. I am bliss. That kind of covers everything, right? I am, I am. And so uh, Fred could share that with you guys. He said he was going to share it with you later. But um, these techniques are so powerful. I've been teaching these and doing this for 25 years. I started off just teaching breathing and literally 30 to 50 people would come to these gyms and just lay on the floor for an hour and we would transcend their mind through just breathing techniques and people were leaving their bodies, people were evolving spiritually, people were healing their bodies, people were you know, coping with their husbands going through cancer treatments and falling apart. And this was like the class that kept them together. The breathing is the glue you know, that keeps you together. Breathing ignites our spirit and the more we breathe, the more we feel spirit. And then life is easy, right? And we just ask spirit all day long. What do I do? What do I say? What do I do? What do I say? Right? What do I do next? Where do I go next? Where's my next? Where's my next customer? Right now you're in aisle five at Publix and you're meeting your next customer because you were like listening to your intuition. Go to the grocery store and you're like, I'm not hungry, right? But you follow your intuition. This stuff ignites your intuition. So when you say, What do I do next? You're listening. So we'll start to increase those intuitive powers the more you breathe. And those gazes, they're so like so incredibly powerful because it's all about your endocrine system. It's all about um, your pituitary gland, your pineal gland. You know, these are very overlooked. No one ever talks about it. But if you read ancient texts from, you know, Indians from India 5,000 years ago, they had it going on and they knew, they knew these secrets of, and Egyptians too, they knew these mystic secrets that only royalty knew about. They kept it to themselves, right? It's like the political party now, right? They're hiding stuff from us, but that's another subject. Anyways, any other questions? Uh, we do this every morning, uh, tw only twice, but this is an intensive 
and it helped me uh, clear my mind. Um, oh, is that Steve I'm, talking? I'm doing, my wife invited me, um, and uh, I'm, I'm just enjoying it. Oh, so glad. Thank you for coming, Steve. Yeah, well, yeah, everyone, you know, take what you learned today and just apply it to your life. You know, if you all get up in the morning and you wake up and open your eyes and start with just 10 deep breaths, inhale peace, exhale the clutter, inhale peace, exhale the bullshit, right? Let's just be honest. Inhale the peace, exhale all the garbage. And then start your affirmations. You know what? Today's going to be a great day. Start your gratitude. Thank you, God, for another great day. Thank you for my lungs. Thank you for keeping me healthy. Thank you for giving me healthy food to eat. Thank you for keeping our kids safe, right? And then you start all your affirmations. I am positive minded. I am healthy. I am attracting more money. I am a money magnet. And then you could get up and do some of the Gaia mudras, the gazes, do a round of breath of fire and the brain amping. Everything will literally activate the flow state. You will be in flow. You'll be at the right place at the right time. Johnny, I just shared that link for that uh, <laughs> incredible, incredible uh, music. Uh, and I, I can't stop listening to it in the morning. And as I said, because, you know, I had the Brent Gove thing coming up. I had some business issues coming up. I had some real serious family relationship situations going on. And Saturday morning when I woke up with all the pressure of the Brent Gove thing coming, and, and we only had, you ready for this? Friday, Saturday morning, I only had 51 registered by Saturday that Saturday now, this is Saturday, we had 80. That's amazing. So my, now, that doesn't mean I sat back and just manifested. I had to work, but I woke up. Yeah. I just, because I was kind of criticizing myself for taking this stuff on, right? And, why do I, uh, and then uh, when I went to bed quiet and did my meditation, then my normal stuff. But when I woke up, it was amazing. It just, you know, beautifully, bountifully, you know, and, uh, um, uh, and then you, when you sent that song, it was crazy. So I just posted that for everyone. But uh, again, this is not voodoo magic. It's nothing. It's just a matter of getting to who we really are. It's that right side again, right? It's, it's being able to tap what you really are and doing away with the fear and the lies because from your BS, your belief system. So Sonny, that was incredible again. Thank you so much. Uh, and you're going to hear more from Sonny. I think she's going to be on again next week, right? <laughs> if you uh, want look at feel great would... meditate look at feel great meditate she has if you're in the area of, of jupiter she has a thing coming up in jupiter and then she has something coming up in delray beach if you're in that area and then on her yeah. uh website feel great meditate um, dot com dot, dot com yeah feel great meditate dot com um she has her calendar link for those that want some consulting and coaching um you know, yeah, she, has become, she has become my personal coach. <laughs> I love it. All right, cool. Anybody else? Someone said, do I have an Instagram? Yes, it, you can follow me at Feel Great Meditate. Sunny, could you do this yes. standing up? I'm sorry? Could you do this standing up instead of sitting down? Oh yeah, you could do it. You could do it standing up. Just be careful because you're closing your eyes and you will feel the energy rising. All right. Thank and you, you could do that. You could do that one with your arms out to the side to balance left and right brain. You could do that standing as well with the breathing. Yes. This is and another. I, this is another mantra I can bring to my uh, prison ministry. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, share, share, share away. That's what it's there for to share. And if anybody else, um, what he, um, Fred was talking about the meditation, there is a beach meditation in Jupiter that's next Wednesday at 6 p.m. and one in Delray at 6.45 p.m. And I also do sound vibrational healing. And there's a Calendly link I left there in the chat. So feel free to copy that if anybody wants to schedule a 15 minute chat. Although it turned into like an hour with one of, one of you last week. So however long it takes and then... Um, Sometimes I go over a technique that you might need for your life. So feel free to schedule one of those, or you could text the word brain to that phone number and get some more information. I do do private sessions by Zoom and I do private sessions live in Stewart and make house calls and office calls and also do your whole team. 
Yeah, you know what's yeah. interesting, uh, Sonny, and and if you really want to look up on uh, Google and search this, I mean, uh, and you know, uh, Steve, that's amazing in prison ministries. I've been doing that all my life. Um, I, I unfortunately grew up uh, watching the prison system and had a brother spend his life there and died after 28 years in prison. So I thank you for your work in the prisons because that's some of the greatest and future leaders are in prison today, I'll tell you. Um, but uh, when you study yoga and meditation, what they're doing in this public school systems throughout some of the places in, in the prisons, that how meditation is changing people from the inside out, because again, that's where we really are. That's the truth. That's what's already in you. It's what you came here with. It's just been covered up by your belief system. So this yoga meditation is so important, you know, really, really uh, important, especially for us that are, um, you know, dealing with people all day long and dealing with deals falling through and dealing with people that may not be happy or dealing with, you know, that stuff eventually, if you try to deal with that from the ego side, you'll just, you know, if you get attacked, you're going to attack back. But if you're in your soul side, you don't attack back. You just, you just extend, right? You extend love, no matter how fierce it is. Uh, and there's nothing more powerful than living a life that where you can't be upset about anything, about anything. There's nothing more powerful than that experience. So this stuff is so critical and so important. And, um, I uh, really appreciate you, Sonny. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> I'm You're sorry welcome. to take the floor like this, but uh, my next question, how would it work on a person that has bipolar? Oh, it's amazing. I've helped many people with bipolar. A lot of these techniques literally end addiction and they also end uh suicidal thoughts and they end depression, like oh. literally but you have to do them every day. And we want to do it really with, you know, a, a, having a coach with a bipolar person is, is good. You know, I helped my aunt. She had severe, severe, severe manic depression and the highs and the lows. And now she's after many, many, many years of helping her, she's finally peaceful. She finally let go of all the drama, trauma. We healed all that, all the trauma and did a lot of things in her subconscious mind where she finally can exist every day and actually feel joy and the, appreciate the good. The reason why I'm asking is because I have, um, I have a granddaughter with two babies that live with me and um, she is bipolar and she doesn't take her medication, okay? And um, we're trying to help her. And this is one of the, pre the Pressure, um, pressures that Sandra and I are on is that because, uh, you know, uh, the way she handles her children is uh, very abusive. Yeah, right. Because she's not filled with love. So she doesn't have anything to give. But yes, this is very helpful for, for women going through that. She also could have, you know, postpartum still people, people have postpartum and depression from their hormones being off balance since they gave birth. And it could be 20 years later. And unfortunately, they're being misdiagnosed. So then they take pills or this or that, and it screws them up even more. But this is definitely all natural. And it's, it's so effective that if she actually learned just a few tools and implemented it every day, she would she would have miracles happen it is it, that's how life-changing this is and so you know sunny, a lot of uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you no, so go sunny, ahead. My, my next question is is there any way that we can do a zoom with her and i will yeah i do yeah i do that i do zoom sessions yeah yeah if you can you see the chat where you are feel great. You could, let me see if I can or go to chat. feel great yeah, or just go to feelgreatmeditate.com and then you can get all my information. Let me see if I can get it. Hold on. Uh, Steve, I can, I can, is your uh, email steve.letit at um, exp realty? No, it's um, S A N L E N 25 at att.net. Sonny, if you'll shoot him an email one more time. S A N L E N 25 at att.net. Yeah, it's it's feel great meditate is the website. Yes, I I, feel, I woke up with a headache this morning and I meditated and it went away. Yes, the breathing helps get rid of headaches. Absolutely. 
you yes. know, it gets rid of, it helps you rise above all the pain. Like literally we transcend the mind and we're, we're like floating over the body. So all the pain leaves and people come to the events all the time and they're like, oh, I can't sit there. I can't sit on the ground. My, my hips hurt, my back hurts. And then when they leave, they can't believe that the pain has dissolved. Right. So Sunny, um, uh, this morning, um, I suggested to my wife that we meditate together holding hands because we're, we're uh, one flesh, my wife and I. And nice. uh, yes, and, and uh, we're, we're going to try something new uh, together and, nice. uh, and you know, see what happens uh, with all our problems. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, so nice to meet you. I look forward to helping you. Thank you. All right, cool. All right, anybody else? Thank you, Steve. Appreciate you. And I'm going to connect with you too because I'd like to hear some of the stuff you're doing and uh, share some stuff I'm doing. Anybody else? Sonny, thank you, you so much. What's that? Fred, I can talk to you about my background. You know. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll connect with you, man. Okay, no problem. Thank you. All right, I, I appreciate you. Where, where are you, Steve? Where are you located? We're in South Florida in uh, Margate. Oh, Margate, you're close to me. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to visit. My office is right in Boca. You ought to come up and visit me, man. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, in fact, sometimes I go to, uh, once in a blue moon, I go to uh, the Boca Bowling Alley over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and I'm at the Board of Realtors building. Stop in and let me know when you're heading up and uh, we'll, we'll visit, okay? Okay, no problem, Fred. Thank you. Uh, all right, super. Um, and then uh, the events, if you're close by, Delray Beach and, and Jupiter, and uh, you're going to hear a whole lot more from Sunny next week. Um, and uh, Sandra, and look at Sandra. You have the same last night as Steve. Do you know that guy? Sandra? Okay. <clears throat> okay, Fred. Um, I'm the one that invited my husband to the event. I've known Sonny through Blanca for quite some time. Yesterday, I was on Blanca's birthday party. I've been MIA for a long time, and my spirit said today was the day to get on. And I asked Steve at the last minute, are you willing to look at something you've never seen before? I've never been with Sonny in the morning and so he said yes and uh -huh. here we are and um, I'm glad to see that there's a few realtors in this event because I have a special realtor intro that I need to talk to you about Fred so oh. I can invite the, the uh, realtors into my world yeah you got it you got it you see my phone number right behind me there can you, if you can I, see that chart? I, I already wrote it down thank you oh, good. so good. Yeah, much. let's talk Let's talk. Um, yeah, well, good. Welcome. I love your uh, I love your background there. Make gratitude a habit, um, you know, and, and I'm going to I'm going to steal that, but I'm going to change. Make gratitude an attitude. <laughs> I love it. Well, good to meet you, too. Steve, you've been on before, though, haven't you? No, he has never been on. And, oh, and, oh, I thought and we we have a phrase that we learned from our great guy that we listen to every morning is um your attitude is your altitude hey amen that's your zig ziglar quote yep it's not your aptitude that determines your altitude it's your attitude <laughs> hey fred i just want to let you know that um i was married before uh, i my angel uh, went to heaven my first angel went to heaven and god replaced her with another angel um and uh, we, we we you know at the beginning we had our problems we met on eHarmony and uh, we, we're just our relationship how many, how many years now how many years it's going on 13 years we're 13, 12 years you. congratulations right. sandra Thank is you. your middle name marie by chance sandra no joe name? joe oh, joe sandra. I had a daughter, unfortunately, she passed away at 36. She was Sandra Marie. Uh, so I love the name Sandra, of course. So it's, it's great to meet you. Um, all right, well, cool. Um, that was fantastic, Sonny. Look at this. I don't think his many's always been remaining this late in the stage, but I love it. Thank you. And next week, folks, we're going we're gonna to do some extra, extra things. Looking forward to it. All right, Tiff. 
or deep. Look at deep. Look, yeah. look at deep. Look how 